if you love force and life in all of its splendid diversity, if you've always wanted to leave the world a little better than you found it, then what I'm about to share is going to be deeply meaningful. We have until September 9th, 2024, to save 1,200-acre Wild Rock Canyon, which lies just 12 miles east of the New River Gorge. This is its story. Here at the Ark of Appalachia, our task is simple and straightforward to preserve the most intact forest communities in the American Appalachian heartland. For over three decades, we have done our work and all of that has been focused solely in Ohio. But today, we are poised to cross over the Ohio River into West Virginia. Crazy, you may say? No, this is the sanest thing we have ever done. For the last 30 years, we have purchased 175 properties, we have spent $35 million and we've saved 11,000 acres of natural areas. We have preserved some of the most beautiful landscapes in the East. Towering forests, stunning geological landscapes, unbelievably beautiful floral showcases, rich waterways and wetlands. Our very first purchase was right here, 47 acres in Highland County, Ohio, 1995. Ever since that day, the Ark of Appalachia has been creeping southward and eastward, county by county. We were certain in all those years that we would cross into the hills of Kentucky, but we never did. We were so busy with premier lands that were coming up for sale in Ohio, and so deeply supported by Ohio's wonderful grant funding opportunities that it just didn't make any sense to go further afield. But this spring, the real estate market took a post-COVID temporary but serious slump. There were very few rural lands even on the market to look at. And the ones we did look at were marginal to be kind. And the prices of those properties are averaging around 4,000 an acre, still post-COVID prices. Meanwhile, Eastern Drift took us to Gallia County and its county seat, Gallup Police. And there, as we stood by the river and looked over the Ohio, we were no longer looking at the hills of Kentucky. Instead, we were looking at the deeply forested hills of West Virginia. In my heart was an immediate recognition. This is where the Ark of Appalachia should be crossing over the Ohio River. And this is exactly the right time to do it. Consider this. If you ranked all the states in the nation on the density of forest cover, guess where West Virginia ranks? Number three, its forest cover is just under 80%. And its land prices, one third those of Ohio's. Fortified with all this information, we started scouring the real estate listings in West Virginia and were immediately impressed by their large size. There were several 500 acre listings for sale there was one that was 1,200 acres. That was the one for Wild Rock Canyon. And that's a really big parcel, even for West Virginia. A week later, Nancy, my colleague, Andrea, and I decided to see Wild Rock Canyon for ourselves. We were very excited, but also cautious. Whatever lay ahead of us, crossing the Ohio River at Gallipolis and seriously looking at land in another state, that was a very big deal. As director of land stewardship, I worried about what we might find when we arrived. When we arrived, my worries rapidly dissolved into elation. Wild Rock Canyon was magnificent. It has incredibly steep slopes with a thousand foot change in elevation from the rim to the valley floor. The forest was medium age, healthy, and filled with oaks. The property was so immense that it took in almost the entire watershed of Rennick Creek, which ran through the middle of it. I was relieved to see that there was only one way into this canyon fortress, through a single locked gate that no one had tampered with. The invasive plant pressure was light and there were no signs of ATV traffic or any other incursions. But what impressed me the most was the wildlife. 
the forest was filled with signature deep forest birds, birds that can't successfully breed in small woodland tracks, black and white warblers, hooded warblers, by the dozens, worm-eating warblers, and oven birds. And there were salamanders everywhere. It seemed like every creek rock that Andrea turned over had two salamanders beneath it. There was no better evidence that we were standing in a healthy forest ecosystem. On the way back out of the canyon, I saw something that makes the heart of an Ohio naturalist skip a beat. I found the deep impressions of a black bear footprint. I was sold. With all of this property's assets, I knew we could manage it capably, even from a distance. When Andrea and Nancy looked at me for my approval, I gave them two thumbs up. Once we had a green light from our conservation colleagues in West Virginia, Nancy and I worked hard and fast to get Wild Rock Canyon into signed contract. Our final negotiated sale price was $1,200 an acre. If we succeed in buying Wild Rock Canyon, it'll be the second largest preserve in the Ark of Appalachia. Only our headquarters, the Highlands Nature Sanctuary, is larger. But to get the sanctuary up to 1,200 acres in size, the same size as Wild Rock Canyon, that took us 30 separate acquisitions. That's the difference between Ohio and West Virginia. Now, I wanted to learn a lot more about what life lay hidden in Wild Rock Canyon. So I, along with naturalist John Howard, got to organizing a bio blitz. Now, a bio blitz is when you get a bunch of research biologists, botanists, and naturalists together to, for a weekend just to take an inventory of all the plants and animals that you can find. And each person focuses on his or her specialty, whether it's identifying fish or macros or herbs, bats, plants, you name it. Now, a few weeks later, we returned to Wild Rock Canyon, this time alongside a volunteer force of 16 research specialists from Ohio. We sained the creeks, we turned over rocks, we keyed out plants, misnetted for bats, set up light stations for moths, launched drones, and hung up 18 game cams. The highlights of the weekend was catching four bat species in the mist nets. The largest bat that was captured was a hoary bat with a 15-inch wingspan. The tiniest was the extremely rare eastern small-footed bat, which weighs less than a hummingbird. Many people don't realize that the southern Appalachians are the epicenter of salamander biodiversity in the entire world. So we spent a lot of time looking under rocks, hoping to see little salamander heads peeking out from underneath. A total of 11 species of salamanders were recorded that weekend, including cave salamanders, an endangered species in Ohio. The handsome salamander on the left is suspected to be a long-tailed slash cave salamander hybrid, and if that gets affirmed, it will be a new state record. One of the most exciting finds during the trip was the tree lungwort lichen. This lichen is a reliable uh, indicator of healthy, undisturbed forests. It disappears for good whenever the canopy is open, so finding it says a lot about the property. But the most exciting find of all, however, uh, were all the different mammals that were uh, revealed in our game cam videos. We were astounded to see so many bears. We just couldn't even believe our eyes. We filmed a mother sow with two cubs, another mother with three cubs, and several solitary boars who seemed to just enjoy smashing our cameras. When the bio blitz was over, after just one day and two nights of inventorying, we documented over 640 species of plants and animals. That's only a small fraction, of course, of what exists at Wild Rock Canyon, but it's the highest species count we have ever documented in just one day. 
All of these discoveries confirm Wild Rock Canyon's high value as a wildlands preservation project. If you could magically go back in time 250 years anywhere in the eastern United States, you would find yourself standing below a solid canopy of forest that has covered the Appalachian Mountains for the last 40 million years. Until, that is, the last 300. Today, much of that forest has vanished or has been torn into small fragments. West Virginia is the only place in the heartland of Appalachia where these forests remain largely intact. If we succeed in buying Wild Rock Canyon, we aren't going to stop with this acquisition, and we have no intention of stopping our ambitious land buying efforts in Ohio. Imagine, just for the moment, what long-term success might look like. A mosaic of forest preserves stretching across both Southern Ohio and West Virginia. Forests growing into their prime, slowly becoming old growth forests. Please make a generous contribution to our Wild Rock Canyon campaign. $1,200 will save an entire acre of forest. Give whatever you can. And if you don't have money, you can still help by passing the word and networking among your circles. With your aid, we can come to the closing table on September 9th, 2024, sign the deed to Wild Rock Canyon and give this magnificent property the gift of permanent protection. In West Virginia, the forests of our past are still waiting for us and they are now for sale. All we have to do is buy them. <music>